Gab with Versamatic. We're here today to install a wet end kit and an E40 Bolton metallic pump. As you can see, we have an E2 Bolton metallic and an E3 Bolton metallic. The same process is applied to all three pumps when installing a wet end kit. As you can see out front, we have genuine Versamatic repair kits, air valve, wet end, and pilot valve kits that can be used to rebuild the entire pump. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. For somatic genuine replacement parts, wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals and more information, visit us on the web at www.versamatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rump video on safety at versamatic.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man method and machine, but for video purposes, some phases of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any phase of the process. These are the tools being used for the E40 and while the sizes will change based on the 2 inch and the 3 inch pumps, the type will remain the same. Half inch combination wrench, 9 16 combination wrench, 12 inch pry bar, o-ring pick, torque wrench, grease, half inch drive ratchet, 3 8 drive ratchet, 5 30 seconds allen wrench, snap ring pliers, inch and a quarter socket, 9 16 deep well socket, half inch deep well socket, 7 16 deep well socket, 3 8 deep well socket. All right, let's get started. First, we're gonna remove the discharge manifold from the E40, and just for ease of maintenance, and the video purposes, we're going to use a cordless impact gun. We're going to go ahead and remove the air valve assembly. Once the air valve assembly is removed, go ahead and set it aside. Go ahead and turn the pump upside down so we have a flat surface to work with on our outer chambers. Now we're going to remove the suction manifold. Now set the suction manifold aside and remove the suction side seats and check balls. Now we're ready to remove one outer chamber and we're going to repeat this process for the second side. We'll use our sockets to remove the diaphragm assembly. This may be difficult after a pump is in use.
set aside the outer plate, remove the old diaphragm, and discard. Remove the inner plate and the plastic washer. Now we can remove the second diaphragm assembly with the diaphragm rod attached. Take note that Versamatic has installed a wrench flat in the center of the diaphragm rod. This is for ease of installation. In today's presentation, we're gonna use a set of aluminum soft jaws and a vise to clamp down on the diaphragm rod so we don't scar or damage the diaphragm rod. We're gonna insert the diaphragm rod into the aluminum soft jaws and clamp down to keep the diaphragm rod from spinning. When in the field, you can use a wrench flat and use an open end wrench with a socket attached to the outer plate to disassemble the diaphragm assembly if you do not have access to a vise and aluminum soft jaws. Remove the plastic washer and break free the inner and outer plates from the used diaphragm and discard the old diaphragms. Now we'll remove our diaphragm rod from the set of soft jaws and inspect for any scarring or scratching. Replace as needed if scarring or scratching is found. Now we're ready to install our wet end kit. Now we want to inspect the outer diaphragm plate and the inner diaphragm plate. Inspect for any sharp edges. You can clean up these edges with a emery cloth or a crocus cloth. Now we'll want to clamp our main diaphragm rod into the vise and our set of aluminum soft jaws. First, we'll install our plastic washer, then our inner diaphragm plate. But before we install our diaphragm, apply a little grease to the touch points on the inner diaphragm plate to ensure that we don't get a false torque in our diaphragm assembly. Ensure that the radius of the inner plate is facing the diaphragm. Now we install the diaphragm with the air side facing towards the inner plate or natural bulge out. Next we put a little grease on the outer diaphragm plate also to ensure that we don't get any false torque when it comes in contact with the rubber diaphragm. While any lubricant can be used, hydrocarbons should never be used when installing EPDM parts. Now we're ready to torque our diaphragm assembly to torque specification listed in the service manual. Next, we're going to want to put a little grease on the main shaft to ensure we don't damage the main shaft O-ring. When you install the main shaft with the diaphragm assembly on one side, be sure to align the bolt holes with the inner chamber. Once the bolt holes are aligned, we're ready to install the outer chamber, inspect the machine surfaces in the radius, and dress up with emery cloth or crocus cloth, also on the machine surfaces on the suction side and the discharge side of the outer chamber. Know the orientation of the pump, ensuring that the discharge port of the outer chamber is aligned with the air valve assembly. Now we can begin to tighten down the outer chamber on one side and you want to tighten these bolts down in a star pattern so we bring it down evenly and don't damage the outer chamber.
Now we're ready to install the diaphragm assembly on the opposite side. First we'll install our plastic washer, apply low grease to the inner diaphragm plate to ensure we get a true torque. Make sure you install the radius towards the diaphragm. Go ahead and invert the diaphragm. Apply a little grease to the outer diaphragm plate, again, to ensure a true torque value. Begin to tighten down the diaphragm assembly. Once we have threaded on the outer plate, we can now use a set of pry bars to shift over the diaphragm assembly when shifting over the diaphragm assembly be sure that the pry bars are located on the inner diaphragm plate so we don't damage the diaphragm Once you have fully shifted over the diaphragm assembly, you can now roll the diaphragm into a natural shape. Now we're ready to torque the diaphragm assembly. Once you achieve torque, you want to line up all the bolt holes. If the torque is achieved between bolt holes, Always go forward, never go backwards. Once the bolt holes are aligned, we're ready to install the opposite outer chamber. Always inspect the machine surfaces, make sure there's a nice clean radius that the diaphragm comes in contact with. Address those with crocus cloth or emery cloth. Also inspect the ball cages, the machine surfaces on the suction side, and the machine surfaces on the discharge side. You can clean up these surfaces or replace as needed. Know the orientation of the chamber in relation with the center section of the pump. Now we can bolt down the outer chamber evenly. Go ahead and turn the pump upside down. When we're ready to install the check balls, please note in the check balls that they have color coding. We're ready to install the valve seats. They have a color coding also and a part number on the valve seats. These valve seats are reversible. Now we're ready to install our suction manifold. You want to inspect the machine surfaces. No nicks, scarring, scratching, damage to those machine surfaces. Inspect the ports the threads, no damages. Inspect the castings, no missing material, damages to the castings. These suction manifolds can go either way, just depends on the pump application. We're ready to bolt down the suction manifold. You want to tighten it down evenly in a star pattern. Now we're ready to install our air valve assembly. First is the air valve gasket. This is a one-way gasket and we need to be sure that all the bolt holes and ports are aligned. Take note on the bottom of the air valve assembly, the porting and the bolts. You want to tighten down the air valve assembly evenly. Now we're ready to install our discharge side 
check balls and seats. Now we're ready to install our discharge manifold. You want to inspect the machine surfaces and the ball cage for any sharp edges, damages, dings, or dents. You can address these surfaces with the emery cloth or a crocus cloth. The discharge manifold can be installed in either direction depending on the pump application. Now we're ready to bolt down the discharge manifold you want to tighten it down evenly in a star pattern. If doing a complete rebuild, refer to our airing kit installation video. That concludes our rebuild of, with a wet end kit into our E40 bolted metallic pump. Our wet end kit included diaphragms, seats, and check balls. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques and procedures used in the rebuild of the E40 bolted pump are also applied to the commonality of the E2 and E3 bolted pump. For more information, visit our website, versamatic.com, or email after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com.